Hi there. Today we're talking to Jim McLeod about distributed cloud and multi-cloud networking. Jim, talk to us a little bit. What is, first of all, distributed cloud? Absolutely, Nick. So if you take a look at cloud out there, we know that everybody's got it. Everybody's using it. We've been moving our way from private cloud through public cloud. We've got hybrid. And if you look back at the history of how cloud has been used, we've seen data slowly move out from the data centers where it lived. And we've seen applications do the same thing. I mean, the first wave we had CDNs to be able to distribute static content everywhere out there. Folks went and added cloud into it. So now you're distributing app applications with business logic and the static items. And at F5, we see that we're moving into the next wave of a, a distributed cloud, which is abstracting out which cloud is actually holding the, uh, the objects and the business logic in a way that just creates a seamless delivery to customers with ultimate flexibility on the back end. Yeah, and we have this awesome build out that you just shared with me um, as we were preparing for this call. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you walk us through this architecture, which I think really is good to represent the various parts of the connectivity and different types of connectivity, uh, which we will later show in a demo. Absolutely. So we've built this to be as simple as possible. There's a lot of automation in the back end, which means that it starts off with, well, we'll, we'll tackle the hardest piece first, which is how do I hook up a headquarters or any sort of campus to the global network. From the SAS console, you generate a site token, you put that in the VM of the headquarters and it auto connects redundantly. There's no IP addresses to configure in there. There's no BGP to configure, no MPLS to configure, no IPsec king to take care of. It's all automatic. And I specifically mentioned those things, BGP, MPLS, IPsec, because that's the technology that we're using. We're, we're being open and honest about it. And it's even easier when you're doing public cloud, private cloud. With public cloud, because it's cloud native, because we've got the SaaS console, when you add a site and you add your credentials in for AWS or Azure or what have you, then on that site, just as you'd expect, it automatically deploys the distributed cloud mesh agent. So that creates the connections back to the F5 global network or across the internet. There's a variety of ways of doing the transport. And it gets even more exciting with edge deployments. If you want to take your cloud services that are now running the same on AWS, Azure, GCP, and use that same uniform architecture, it looks the same from the development point of view, it looks the same from the operations point of view, if you want to push that out to customer edge, maybe you've got in-store kiosks, maybe you've got industrial applications or mobile edge. That's where distributed cloud app stack comes into play as a platform to run those applications so that they'll run universally and you can do the same lifecycle management no matter where they're running. That's awesome. Um, and I think from a customer standpoint, you might not necessarily have all of these use cases, but you can definitely hit on a few. Oh yeah, uh, which it's, is... it's a la carte. You, you don't have to use everything. Everything's available to you depending on what you buy, but whatever your use case is for digital transformation to be able to stitch together your different sites at layer three, layer four, or layer seven, we've got the tools there for you and we'll do it automatically. Yeah, and, and that's what was one of the more exciting parts of this project when we we're helping out. Uh, my team was building the demo of the Arcadia Finance. It was trying to showcase all of these use cases within one customer scenario. Um, and let's talk a little bit about the three scenarios that we will be showcasing in subsequent videos, because I think each one of them is a really good um, kind of representative use case for getting benefit out of F5 distributed cloud services, um, starting first with improving app performance. Cool, with improving app performance, it looks like what you've done is move the mortgage calculator out to that customer edge in store. Or uh, maybe you're using the regional edge network as part of our ADN, our application delivery network, in which case you're hosting in whatever region is closest to 
your customers. Yeah, and that's and that's frequently the easiest way to just get going if you have a service that's uh, maybe a application service or maybe a containerized uh, app module that you want to improve performance of, particularly for global audiences. So moving it to customer edge, uh, which is a global network distributed all over the world, is probably the easiest, the simplest way to get started. And and for yeah. us, this was a very quick way to deploy. Cool. I'm I'm glad to hear that it's working for you the way that we wanted it to, the way that we designed it. Excellent. So then the other two scenarios are connecting uh, clouds. So we started first of all with building out a module within this Arcadia Finance Sample app that does transfers. And the for whatever reason, the, the team that built this, um, let's just say within the customer scenario, this fictitious customer, built it on Azure and the service runs well, it is working just fine, but the core application is on AWS. Um, so we leverage your technology to connect the two very easily, in this case with layer three networking. Nice, yeah, what the architecture here doesn't really show you is that you can have multiple public clouds, multiple regions per public cloud. You can have each region with multiple different sites for different projects. So I'm glad to hear that you're able to use the public cloud to public cloud connection as part of your application mesh. Yeah, and L3, L4 networking, we will show a video on that. Um, very, very quick and easy to get started with the connectivity, secure connectivity and networking for the two sets of services to talk to each other. In our case, it's the transfer module on Azure that was talking to the back end, the core application on AWS. And then finally, which I think is my favorite um, because it is lightweight, in my opinion, a very easy way to connect across multiple services is using a layer seven HTTP load balancer. Uh, in this case, we had a module that we built for a refer a friend service. And considering referring a friend means you are sharing and or collecting data, uh, we thought in a financial services institution, it would make sense to keep the data uh, on, on prem as one example. So in this case, it's a VMware environment that we had set up that needs to talk to the core application on AWS. Um, and the method that we used here was the L layer seven connectivity uh, through load balancer. Cool. So it sounds like what you've got there is point and click hybrid cloud on a service by service basis. That's right. And all of three of these scenarios is what we will go through next in our subsequent videos. And we'll be referring to a few services from distributed cloud services that makes all of this possible. Cool. Yeah. If you take a look at the, uh, the service stacks in front of us, the magic that makes this work is distributed cloud mesh has integrated networking and security services. So everything you'd expect to find in there that you'd normally need to go through and set up yourself. You've got the router for connectivity. You've got firewall, you've got DDoS scrubbing for network security. And then we build up from that. So you can do public cloud IAC controlling, uh, rolling out VPNs, VPCs. Uh, we've got application delivery controller. We've got fraud and abuse, application security with bot detection, with anomaly detection from the WAF. A lot of things baked into a single piece of software. And then when we look at the, uh, the customer edge, which I personally think is really exciting as the next wave of where we're going to see applications hosted, that's where we're looking at AppStack. And AppStack has that Kubernetes compute platform, turnkey managed by F5 SREs. So it automatically updates. There's nothing to do beyond that initial installation. And you can deploy apps from anywhere, even using standard Kubernetes tools. And that's true. We, when we were first asked to use uh, the distributed cloud stack to create this reference application, we had to um, sign up and start using the tools that we already used to, right? So we, we you know, we use use kubectl uh, to control the Kubernetes cluster to deploy application services using containers. This is pretty straightforward. We already had all of the most of these services built out, and all it was is just being able to start using the um, the GUI really just to configure the different endpoints, set up the load balancers, and make all of these objects talk to each other, which as we uh, promised, we're going to be doing in the next series. So thank you so much, Jim, for kicking this off. And let's talk about the next exciting video down below. Sounds good.